Hey, pre-calculus friends, Miss D here. We're looking at section 1-4 and writing linear equations. Our vocabulary for this section is pretty limited. We're dealing with the term model and the uh, phrase point slope form, both of which you should kind of be familiar with. When we talk about model, it basically means that we can use um, we're trying to figure out what we can use to represent data or information. And so in this section, we're going to be looking at modeling data and information in terms of a linear equation. For instance, if you were to see some scattered information, let's say, I don't know, um, down here we have years and up here we have the amount of cost of a postal postage stamp or something like that. So I'm just going to put cost here. And if we start in like 1900s, it's really low. And then Maybe it stays the same, then it goes up, then we get a big leap, and then it comes down a little bit, but it goes up, and then, you know, we've got this kind of situation that happens. What we see is that sometimes data can lend itself to being modeled by mathematical equations. That's what model means here. And so I could probably draw a line in here, which would be called the line of best fit, to say, okay, it looks like this is the trend that's been happening, and therefore I could predict, because that's what models are generally used for, predictions, I can predict, predict that the year in 2025, the cost of the postage stamp, based on past calculations, based on the fact that it falls in a linear model, would be, I don't know, $1, whatever. So that's what model means in this case. Model just means representation. And finally, you guys are familiar with this point slope form. It's when you're walking down the street and somebody gives you a point and a slope and says, quick, find me the equation of the line. Probably wouldn't happen, but you know what I mean. And so what you know, I'm just going to give it to you uh, like this. If you're given a point, and let's say the point is x sub 1, y sub 1, this would be numerical, of course, and you're given a slope m, you can find the equation of a line by simply doing this. y minus y sub 1 is equal to m times the quantity of x minus x sub 1. I don't want to be confusing, but this, if it were rearranged, I don't know how comfortable you're feeling with this. Remember the slope is equal to the change in y's, y sub 2 minus y sub 1 over y, um, x sub 2, let me get that rid of that, over x sub 2 minus x sub 1. And if I were to kind of like multiply both sides by x sub 2 minus x sub 1, I'd literally get this. So you can see that there's a, a, a definite connection between the um, that formula and the point slope form. But the point slope form is this guy right here. All right, let's get started with some problems. So in each of these problems, we are asked to write an equation in slope intercept form for each line described. So slope intercept form, we remember, is y equals mx plus b. And here, this is going to be pretty straightforward, right? A slope of this and a y-intercept of that seems like a bit of plugging and chugging to me. So I know that slope is going to be replacing the m and the y-intercept will be replacing the b. So my equation will be y is equal to negative 3 over 4x plus 7. Pretty simple, right? That's all we need for that one. But here we're given something different. Here we're told a slope of negative 6, like it, but it passes through the point 1, negative 3. And the way we can handle this, there's like a bunch of ways we can handle this. The way that we can handle this is um, several fold. Let me, let, me, let me do it this way. So if I start out with the goal, which is y equals mx plus b, I can, since this is the slope, substitute it right in there. Just like you remember, we just talked about that. When we see we've got the slope, we just put it right there. So I'm going to do that. y equals negative 6x plus b. But the other thing I need, it was so easy here, I need that b value, and I don't have it. In order to find it, we're going to use this point. And we're going to take the point, and we're going to substitute in the x value for x and the y value for y. And so when I do that, I get negative 3 is equal to negative 6 times 1 plus b. Notice the thing I want, which is b, is the only variable here, is, is the only variable left in the equation, and that excites me. So now I've got negative 3 equals negative 6 plus b. Move that negative 6 over to the other side, it becomes a positive 6, so I end up having a positive 3 equals b. Are you guys with that? I hope that made sense. And now what I'm going to do is, now that I have my b value, let me go ahead and highlight it in red, I can now finish the equation. I can now finish plugging everything in. So I see that my equation is y equals negative 6x plus 3. There's other ways to do this, but I think that's a pretty straightforward way. 
So for the sake of understanding another way, I'm going to call on the slope, um, the point slope method that we talked about. So y minus y sub 1 equals m times x minus x sub 1. And remember, this is when we're given a point and a slope that we have here. So I'm redoing this problem, guys. So don't think that you have to do both of these. But I'm redoing the problem. And it says the slope m is negative 6. And the point, um, and the point we would call it x sub 1, y sub 1, OK? So that's how we refer to the point. That point is 1, negative 3. And so now I'm literally just going to plug everything in here to this form. So I have y minus negative 3, which actually is a plus 3, and m, which is negative 6, times x minus 1. This is the equation of the line. I literally can walk away from this and be done, but we have to remember that we were asked to put it in slope intercept form. That's not going to be hard for us. We're going to just take this form, simplify it a bit, solve for y, and we'll have slope intercept form. So on the left side of the equation, I'm going to have y plus 3 is equal to, I'm going to distribute that negative 6, so I get a negative 6x plus 6. I'm going to move my y, my not my y, but my 3 over to the other side by subtracting 3, and I'm going to end up with y is equal to negative 6. If I subtract 3 from this 6, negative 6x, if I subtract 3 from this 6, I, well, let me just write it down. Stop trying to confuse the children. Then I get this exact answer I got up here. So um, the point in that is just to show that there's more than one way to handle a problem like this. And we definitely could use the uh, point slope formula because we were given points, the point and the slope on the line. Alvin Hawkins is opening a home business, home based business. He determined that he will need $6,000 to buy a computer and supplies to start. So that's a startup fee. And he expects expenses for each month to be about $700. We're going to write an equation that models the total expenses after y after x months. So x is the number of months that we're dealing with. y will be the total expenses. So y equals is a fair way to express this. Now he's got a base cost of $6,000 that he's going to cost that it's going to start just to start the business. But that's not a recurring cost. The recurring cost would be the $700 monthly. So that would be $700 times the number of months that he is in business or that he's, you know, working on this particular endeavor. And so the total expenditures or expense for however many months would be 700x, that's per month, and plus the original cost of $600. So here you can probably recognize that this equation is in slope intercept form. So this is our last example, and it will be a little bit extensive. You probably want to use a graphing calculator such as Desmos that we talked about, that we'll talk about even more throughout the year. So here we have that each year of the U.S. Department of Commerce publishes its survey of current businesses. Included in the report is the average personal income of U.S. workers. Personal income is one indicator of the health of the U.S. economy. How could you use the data on average personal income from 1980 to 1997 to predict the average personal income in 2010. Now we know this is obviously an old textbook, but let's see if we can do it anyway. So what they did is they started off their data with zero. So that's year zero being 1980. So years since 1980, so zero years would be 1980, so forth and so on. So you can see that this represents up to 1997. And it's, it's really convenient when you do that um, in terms of starting with an easier number when you're instead of like using really large numbers because we're going to be finding the slope and all that stuff. So what you really want to know is how we're going to graph it. So this is what we're going to do. We're going to go to Desmos and you can just type in Desmos, D-E-S-M-O-S, D-E-S-M-O-S, -E and you should get some pretty, a pretty nice calculator. It's a really nice graphing calculator. I'm going to click on that. And the cool thing about this graphing calculator, not only graphs equations and not only does little math, you can also um, do some cool things. Let me see if I, I do the right thing. Is it a plus sign? I think it's the plus sign. There it is. Yeah. So you can actually put images in here, um, have folders, uh, put in expressions. But I'm going to use this for a table right now. So I'm going to, hopefully you guys can see all of my screen, I'm going to uh, pause and put all this information in here so it's a lot easier than me actually graphing it Whew. okay so I put all of that information in there because you know who wants to do that by hand 
And what it does for me, it's going to graph it. And you're probably like, I can't see the graph. And neither can I. And I'm sure you guys can tell me why. Because this graph isn't really going to have the, um, we're, lo we're not looking in the right place in the graph. This graph on the x-axis goes from negative 10 to positive 10. On the y-axis, the screen is only showing us negative 5 to uh, somewhere about a positive 8. So what we do is we go into the tools, and now we can adjust what we're seeing. Since my x values goes from 0 to 17, I'm going to start at like negative 1 to a positive 20. I think that'll be really good. And now my y values are ginormous. They're huge. So I know that I want to see my y axis. I mean, I could like start at zero and go, go all the way up to like 26,000, but I want to see a little bit better than that. So I'm going to start at, let's say, 9,000, and I'm going to go all the way up to, let's say, 26,000. So hopefully that'll give me a nice view. And when I do that, I am happy about life. I'm going to stop that. And look, there's my graph. Look at that. Pretty cool. And so what we're supposed to do in a situation like this is to kind of, remember we talked about modeling data earlier. We're going to take two points that we think kind of represents a general flow of the information. And the thing about this is that everybody won't choose the same two points. So we don't get exactly the same answer. But we're going to choose two points. Let's say I like this one and... Uh, if I'm looking at the data, maybe these two. Let's say I like these two points. I totally picked them at random. Um, what we sometimes do is do something called a, uh, a, a, line, a line of best fit test where you like kind of draw lines. I can't actually draw a line on this particular screen, but I can on this one back here. So I will spare you my efforts. But you draw a line that seems pretty straight, that seems like it connects most of the dots and it's a good approximation of your information. And so we've chosen two points here.